Hey y'all, what's going on? It's your girl, Miss Tink. That's in my CZ, not in my SS. Yes, and before we get started with this video, shout out to my girl T. I'm going to put her information, of course, below on the screen and in the, and in the disclaimer box. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, get on with the get on because I don't got that much time. And as you can hear, I got a little cold and I really just want to get this over with so I can nurse my cold so I can get back to being me. So, anyways, we're on here to talk about none other than If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 3, Episode 4, Blonde Hair, Blue Eyes. So, anyways, we see Kelly and Alex in the hospital. The nurse comes in and checks on Alex and does her normal procedure. Um, Kelly wants, you know, the nurse to leave and let Alex rest because she thinks Alex is resting. Alex ain't really resting. She's just sitting there with her eyes closed, you know. I guess daydreaming, I guess. After that, you know, Alex looks at Kelly and say, you know, what's up with you? And Travis, like, you need to go get you some sleep. Kelly was like, you need to do that. You need to take your own advice and get you some sleep, too. That's when they switched the um, conversation up to Travis. Alex wants to get her mind off of what's going on with her mess with Randall. So she wants to talk to Kelly about what's going on and says that, you know, you've been here for me. So why not let me be here for you? And I'm like, girl, okay. That's when Kelly um, goes on about what she did with Travis, how she's playing this little game with him. Because, you know, men and women both want what they can't have. It's very true, no matter if you're gay or straight. And she put it on him. So now the nigga is whining like Ray J in one wish. I'm just saying that's what he so what are you doing? And then as they're talking or whatever, that's when, you know, it leads back up to Randall. And Kelly was like, that's why I didn't want to talk about Randall. And that's when Alex was basically saying she wants to move far away. Kelly brings up, do you even have any money? And the only reason why she wants to move far away is because Randall wants her and won't let it up. And she doesn't want him anymore. And then Kelly basically says, you know, Brad is really upset, which he should because of what Alex did or whatever. And then as they're talking, that's when we see a call from Marcy. And what does Kelly do? Ignores Marcy calls, which is the reason why I went off in my last video because ain't none of y'all hoes is there. Well, I like Natalie. But ain't none of y'all females is there for Marcy, the one who was actually cheating on but y'all up in the hospital on, oh, woe is me, Alex, who had this baby out of wedlock because she cheated on her husband with with. Her best friend's husband. I'm just saying, this shit don't even sound right. And I feel like Kelly was wrong for ignoring Marcy's call. You could have took that call. You know that girl is hurting. Anyways, after Alex asks Kelly who called, Kelly lies and says nobody. Then says she's going to go to her house and get some sleep and tells Alex to do the same. And then reminds Alex to feed the baby. I'm like, why you got to remind her? But anyways, after we see Kelly leaving the hospital, whatever, we see Marcy drinking and on Kelly's voicemail, you know, begging not begging, but asking for her to call back because, you know, she really needs a friend to talk to because she ain't, you know, she ain't really got that many friends. And all, like I said, y'all hoes ain't no real friends because y'all would have been there for her just like y'all there for Alex. I understand she done had a baby, but damn, she went in the wrong, not Marcy. And y'all just alienate Marcy like she, like she just a, a parasite or nothing to y'all. Y'all, y'all fucked up for that. I'm just saying I wouldn't do that. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and console the person that you fucked over because you was in the wrong and they was doing the right thing by being faithful to their marriage, the vows that they gave to that person and the Lord up above. Unlike what you did, Alex. I'm just saying it is what it is. Anyways, after that we see um, Randall and his mama eating or whatever. Of course, Louise is sitting there talking shit about Marcy, about how she don't cook, how she don't clean. And, you know, I'm like, Randall, just how you gonna let your mom talk about your wife like that when you're the one who fucked up? And I just really want Marcy to just tell, just tell it. All these dropping these hints and all of this shit, just tell his mama what the fuck he did. He cheated. The fuck? All this beating around the bush and letting her disrespect you in your own house. I'm just saying it is what it is. But I guess we're leading up to that. Y'all know how Tyler is. And then that's when, um... The mama basically brings up, I don't understand why my son married you. Then she brings up a chick called um, Allie or whatever. And that's when Marcy puts it together. So it all, all started with Allie. Did she, you know, and then that's when the mama, or should I say Marcy, asks, did she have blonde hair and blue eyes just like Alex? Of course, you know, she did, the mama admits. And that's when Marcy basically says, oh, you've been doing this. This is what you like. So why did he marry me? And, you know, Miss Louise throwing shade, like, I wonder... Why too? And just throwing insults, and that's when Marcy was like, "Okay, and your son is a ho your son is a bitch, or your son is a hoe, which he is." And then at the end of the day, as they arguing, you know, Miss Louise asked <clears throat> Randall where she gonna sleep, and Marcy's like, "Hell no, that bitch ain't sleeping in here. She can go to a hotel. She don't want the bitch there." But oh, but ultimately, Randall gives in and gives the, up the master suite to his mom, and that's when I love when Marcy made that joke talking about, "Okay." She can sleep in there. Remember, 
I'm I'm next door to you. See if you wake up. I said, oh. She said something like that, but y'all know what she said. I ain't saying verbatim because I'm tired, but I still was like, damn, I'm right, girl, with the threats. You see, mama got scared when she was asking Randall, you know, is there, is the door, does the door lock, is, is there any weapons, all, all this stuff put up. Mm-hmm, mama, yeah, you scared, but you talking shit about it, but you scared, and you sleeping with one eye open. I was like, God, I'm Marcy. I'm all Marcy on this, on this. I really am because I feel sorry for her. But anyways, go ahead and press play to the next scene. All right, so the next scene opens up where we see Eddie coming to the police station. And that's when you see the rippy cop, the rippy. That's when you see uh, Pete, the new rookie cop or whatever, and talking to Eddie and announces that he's uh, Lucian's new partner. Why? And of course, Eddie going to try his scheming ways to get Pete on his side and do his dirty work too like he did with been or whatever and I'm like oh my god I just want somebody just to whoop Eddie's ass real good or at least put a bullet in him where he could be crippled for life I'm just saying it is what it is I can't stand Eddie I want his karma to come back on his ass tenfold Tyler I hope so as he's talking to Pete Pete reveals that you know there's surveillance camera and then reveals that you know Ben basically tried you know lied and Eddie thinking that he told the truth of what really happened is him no come to find out Ben or should I say Steven course Ben to say that he was uh, cleaning his gun and the gun went off and now all his fingers are gone what the fuck ever I'm telling you this police force is so dirty I'm it just makes me wonder is it like this in real life I bet it is too in certain states in certain areas and, and with certain cops so after that uh Lucius and Steven walks up and then of course Eddie because Eddie was trying to uh, stay, ready to come back to work. So she, so he tells the chief, chief, like, you ain't coming back to work. You know, I've been released from the doctors. You're not coming back to work. Then that's when Lucian comes. He tries to thank Lucian. Lucian don't want to hear it. Tell him to get the hell on. Lucian ain't trying to hear what Eddie got to say. And that's when Eddie leaves. And then Lucian mentions to Stephen that he wants to videotape. Stephen, of course, throwing his damn authority around. And that's when Lucian was like, all right, fuck it. And then he goes to talk to Pete. He was like, don't think it's dishonorable, but I mean, like, damn, it's dishonorable anyway. What type of police officer are you guys hiring that can't even clean his gun right? But it is what it is. Let's go ahead and press play to the next scene. All right, after that, we see the three, you know, golden girls or whatever, the new 2015 golden girls, should I say. Natalie, Kelly, and Esperanza meeting up together and talk. Natalie wants to get a house for her and Lucian because she loves Lucian, but her credit is bad. But Kelly was like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to pull your file. So as Kelly is getting the application, that's when um, Natalie asks Esperanza, have you heard from Eddie? Has he said anything about, you know, any of the stuff that's been going on with Lucian? And Esperanza only says, the only thing that Eddie has been talking about is the stuff that went on between Randall, Alex, and Brad. And that's when Natalie just basically drops it. But anyways, let's go and press play to the next scene. All right, so the next scene opens up where we see Randall going out to the shed. And who's waiting for him? But Brad. You know, Randall is scared. You see the look on his face like his damn soul left his body or whatever. Brad starts, you know, basically talking this shit, letting him know, nigga, I used to kill. I, I want to kill. I might want to kill some more, which may be, you know, his two victims that he's picking out could be Alex or... Alex and Randall, not or. Randall, of course, is scared or whatever. You know, because the fact that Randall is scared, he's over there apologizing. Brad don't believe it. I'm like, Brad, please don't believe that shit. And he, you know, Brad basically tells Randall, is this where you've been my wife over in the shed and all of this stuff? And he was always wondering, kind of find out, yeah, it was Randall all the time banging your wife. So he's basically pissed off. Scares Randall. Randall's scared to apologize, and as always. And then that's when Brad was like, you know, you gonna get yours. One day, I'm going to hurt you just like you hurt me. I ain't saying it verbatim, y'all, but y'all know what he did because he looked dead at him like, yeah, I'm going to get your ass back. And I was like, yeah, get his ass back, Brad, because he so deserve it. Alex, too. But anyways, let's go ahead and press play to the next scene. All right, y'all, after that, we see Eddie go visit Ben or whatever in the hospital. And I'm like, Eddie, why are you playing with his wound like that? I mean, you just don't give no fucks. I just want a bullet in Eddie. I know that's wrong to say, but I can't stand him. And that's when um he's basically talking to him about what he heard at the station and all that stuff. Brad is apologizing because he a little wimp-ass nigga. I'm just saying he a little wimpy-ass cop to me. That's, that's all I got to say. And then that's when Brad, not Brad, but that's when Eddie said, I'm going to get you out of here tonight so you can do a drop for me. I'm like, damn, Eddie, let him rest. You don't give a damn. Bitch, a shot is a shot. Everybody done got shot before. I said, oh, somebody slap Eddie for me, please. I just, I just want that one good time. Brad doesn't say nothing. He agrees because he's scared of Eddie. So he's about to get out and do the same shit that got his hand his hand blown off in the first place. Motherfuckers don't learn. But then again, 
Eddie, he that, he that motherfucker that just don't give up. I just want his ass to get caught. I just want that. And I want Lucian to get that damn videotape so that way they can get Eddie's ass for good. I hope he gets it. I really do. But anyways, go ahead and press play to the next scene. Yeah, so anyways, Randall is basically in the bed thinking of, well, on the couch, not the bed, thinking about Alex, calls Alex's phone, but it doesn't go through or whatnot. I was like, oh, Randall just don't quit. Randall just don't quit. And then after that, we see Randall headed out towards, well, at first I didn't know where he was, but of course he's headed to Alex. So he has to Alex in the hospital. Alex is all scared, telling him to get away. He's like, I love you. I can't live without you. Just as crazy as the rank. I'm telling you, Randall creeps me out to the point where Alex calls um, the nurse and the nurse comes in and as the nurse coming in the nurse looks at him like who are you what are you doing here and all that stuff is he scaring you and I'm like bitch look at Alex's face if she calls you an urgency duh bitch she's scared come on now and then that's when um that's when Randall leaves or whatever and then Alex goes off on the nurse I'm like, how did he get in here she's like I'm sorry did he see the baby because Randall brought up the baby talking about you know has you know has Brad seen it have you know how's the baby and all of this stuff and I'm like oh lord Randall just stopped and that's when Alex goes off on the nurse and say I don't ever want him to come back here don't let this happen again and everything I was like yeah Alex you scared now shouldn't have got yourself in this in the first place but I'm not gonna keep beating you down you know what you did but anyways go on press play to the next scene all right, so the basically the episode ends, and this is a good episode too, I must say, because I was just I wanted Marcy just to spill the beans, but eventually she will. So the episode ends where Marcy can't sleep, so she goes out, she sees Brad by the shed, goes out and talk to Brad. Brad and her talking. Brad gives her a drink, or should I say, pour some of his drink in her thing, and that's when they start complimenting each other, giving them googly eyes. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Marcy will have some revenge sex, goes over there, start kissing on um, Brad. I was like, okay, all right, Marcy, I ain't mad at you. Go get you some revenge sex, but you need to be mindful who's watching. But... And then they um, walk off to the shed and start kissing and touching. Uh, Marcy turns off the light, and lo and behold, who's watching in the, in the window? But none other than Miss Louise herself watching the whole thing. And I was like, damn, Marcy, the bitch already don't like you. Now you're going to give her a real reason. I'm just saying, I don't understand why Marcy just couldn't, couldn't out Randall's psychotic milk dud looking ass. I just don't understand it, but it is what it is. And that's basically how the episodes end. I cannot wait to see next week. I can't wait to see what Randall's going to do when he hears Marcy and them having sex because you did it to her. And now with your payback, that Brad was going to give it to your ass. So anyways, y'all, that is the ending of my if Loving You Was Wrong, Season 3, Episode 4, Blonde Hair, Blue Eyes. So, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm sorry that this video was so fast and late. I am sleepy, but I'm going to get these videos out to you because it's my dedication and I will get better at it. It's a work. I'm a work in progress, y'all, please. Um, as always... I'm putting my sister's website at the bottom. And y'all, please sign up for my Cincy party with none other than the beautiful Much Love from KY, Miss Nina. I will be hosting it with her. So y'all check it out. I'm going to put all that in the, in the disclaimer box below so y'all can check out the link and stuff. And again, like, comment, subscribe, and share. My name is Miss Tink. That's M-I-Z-Z, not M-I-S-S. Yes, and I'm going to go do something about this code because I, I can't be like this. I sound so horrible. Yeah. But anyways, y'all, y'all have a blessed night. And remember, the channel is Natural Polo Sisters TV. And y'all have a blessed one. Goodbye.